artist. Um, today I want to talk to you about our project and I want to ask you guys um, how many of you like bugs? <clears throat> bugs are something that a lot of us think are kind of creepy crawly, sometimes they're really gross. Some bugs we really don't like at all, like mosquitoes. I don't like mosquitoes. They tend to bite and make you itchy. Um, there's lots of bugs out there that do seem to be just really yucky, but then there are some bugs that are really, really very, very cool. Um, and some of them are quite beautiful. Some of them are beautiful even if they are, if they are kind of yucky, but um, there's one that I think is a really kind of a neat bug, and I'm gonna read you a story today. And this story is The Very Lonely Firefly by Eric Carl. Um, and then when we're done reading the story, we're going to make a, a picture and if you can, we'll do some painting. If you can't, if you don't have um, watercolors with you, then maybe you can do it in crayon or marker or something else. But um, it's going to be a fun, fun project and we'll talk about um, symmetry. We'll talk about um, how to go about making our firefly. Uh, and it's going to look kind of like a dragonfly as well. Um, there's some similar features. But this is The Very Lonely Firefly by Eric Carle. I just love all the painting that he does. He paints all of his paper before he makes his art. So everything that we see in these pictures, he has painted the paper to look like that. As the sun set, a little firefly was born. It stretched its wings and flew off into the darkening sky. It was a lonely firefly and it flashed its light, searching for other fireflies. We have down here, we have lots of other little animals. We have a truck, we have a firefly, but he's all by himself. The firefly saw a light and flew toward it, but it was not another firefly. It was a light bulb lighting up the night. And he says, hear that noise? The firefly saw a light and flew toward it, but it was not another firefly. It was a candle flickering in the night. And if you've ever seen a flyer, firefly, that's kind of what they do. They flip their lights on and off. The firefly saw a light and flew toward it, but it was not another firefly. It was a flashlight shining in the night. And he's saying, quiet out there. Don't know what he's saying quiet to, do we? The firefly saw a light and flew toward it. But it was not another fly firefly. It was a lantern glowing in the night. And they're saying, what is it? Hey, stop fighting. Uh-oh, something's fighting in the night. The firefly saw several lights and flew toward them. But they were not other fireflies. There was a dog. Oh, wow. A cat. Can you see that cat? Must be a dark cat. And an owl, their eyes reflecting in the night, or reflecting the lights in the night. I don't know if you've ever seen animals at night, but they have special eyes that, um, that reflect the light really, really well at nighttime, especially owls. Look at that. Ooh. The firefly saw a light and flew toward it, but it was not another firefly. It was a car's headlights flooding the night. Look, wow, it's beautiful. The firefly saw many lights and flew toward them, but they were not other fireflies. They were fireworks sparkling and glittering and shimmering in the night. 
Look at all those beautiful fireworks going off. The fire, when it was all quiet, the firefly flew through the night, flashing its light, looking and searching again. Then the very lonely firefly saw what it had been looking for. A group of fireflies flashing their lights. Now the firefly wasn't lonely anymore. So when we look at all of these fireflies, and there's lots and lots of fireflies on the back, and there's that group of them here in the night, and the book used to light up, there's little lights inside there. The fireflies have a body that has an abdomen, which is the base of it, the thorax, which is kind of the chest of it, and the head. They have antenna. Um, Fireflies, like most insects, have six legs. Um, so what we will be doing today is we're going to draw something that looks kind of like a firefly. It kind of looks like a dragonfly. And, um, and then we're going to give it some decoration. We're going to give it some pattern. And we will be painting it or coloring it in, depending on what you have available to you. Okay. So now that we have read The Very Lonely Firefly by Eric Carle, we are going to make our own firefly. Um, and when we look at the body of this firefly, we see that it has a head, it has what's called a thorax and the abdomen, and then it has six legs coming off, three legs on each side and two sets of wings. So we are going to try to do something a little bit similar. Now I have turned my paper horizontal this direction so that I have space for those wings. The wings might be want to be a little bit bigger than the body. Um, so we're going to think about how we can do that. So I need to kind of figure out about where the center of my paper is. So I want to look and I, um, I want to come pretty much to what I think is the middle of the paper and I'm going to draw just a little line going down what I think is probably about the middle of my paper. Okay. At the top of that line, I'm going to draw a little circle for the head. Below that circle, I'm going to draw sort of an oval kind of shape, so a longer circle, right? And then below that, I'm going to draw an even longer one that comes down. And maybe it's more of a teardrop shape where it comes to a point, okay? So I've got the main part of the body. Um, and when we look at the very lonely firefly, um, Eric Carl has done it so that we're kind of often looking at the bottom side of it so that we see the legs as if they're on top of the wing. So it's as if we're looking from underneath. Um, we aren't going to do it quite that way. We're going to do ours so that we're looking from the top. So coming from that line that's in the middle, okay, I'm going to draw a big curved line that's going to come almost to the edge of my paper and I'm going to curve it around and bring it back. Then I'm going to do the same thing coming from that line, big line that curves almost to the edge of my paper. I'm going to bring it back. Okay, so now I have the upper wings. Oh, and that one's a little bit bigger than this one. I could, if I want to, make this one a little bit bigger. I don't have to. I can if I want to, and I can leave that line. Maybe I decide that I'm going to put that line in over here too, okay? Then I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to come out, and I'm going to follow that line, and I'm going to make a second wing that comes down. This looks to me a lot like a dragonfly. I like dragonflies. They're very useful. They get rid of our mosquitoes. Okay, so there's my second wing. So I followed right along that line and then coming out from that, I made a curve, boop, 
and come back, come out over here, make a curve, boop, and come back. All right, and then I have the body and the wings. Now, I could be done there if I want to, or I could draw some little legs that come out. One, two, and then maybe three, four, and then we have to pretend that the other legs are hidden. And then our little dragon or our little firefly is going to have some little antenna coming up. Okay. So on my legs, I want to make them big enough. I need to make them so that I could color or paint inside of them. So I'm going to draw parallel lines that go right along with those legs. So there's two legs and then coming down at the bottom. Okay, and I have to connect them up down here at the end at the little foot, right? It's kind of a funny looking little dragonfly or firefly, but that's okay. All right, um, so now I have the main part drawn. If I would like to add a little pattern into my wings, I could make a little bit of a pattern in my wings. I can draw a few little stripes. And the reason I like to do this is there are a few reasons. Well, the dragonfly, the firefly, the butterfly, all of our beetles, all of our bugs that have these wings have all these little lines. If you look really closely, they have some really kind of cool lines that go through their wings. And those are their little veins that go through the wings. Well, in those little veins, there's kind of a cool pattern. So if you would like to make a little bit of a pattern you can, and what that also does for us, what I like about it for an artist, is that it gives us a place to change our colors, which is a lot of fun when you're painting. Now, if I want to, I can erase that long skinny line that set, sorted out the center of my paper, okay? So there's my firefly. Now I'm going to think about what kind of colors I want to use for my firefly. For my first graders, if you're a first grader, um, what I have done in the past is we talk about hot colors and cool colors. So when I'm looking at my colors, red, orange, and yellow are three colors that make me think of nice warm things. The sun, fire, and the fire pit. Those are some nice warm things and those colors represent that. My cool colors are green, blue, and purple. And green, blue, and purple make me think of the nice cool grass, night sky, swimming, more night sky, just some nice soft cool colors. So in the, um, sometimes when I have done this, we might make the, the bug be hot colors and the background be cool colors. Um, you can do that if you would like to today, or you could choose to make the bug cool colors and the background hot colors. That is what I'm going to choose to do today. I'm going to paint every part of my dragonfly and I'm gonna paint it in the cool colors. I'm gonna do my background a little bit later in the warm colors. The other thing that I want to do is I want to take my um, black marker or pen and I think the, um, the Sharpie pens work pretty well. I don't want to use a Crayola marker because it will wash away and it'll make my painting really messy. Um, that black of the Crayola marker 
will mix in with my paint and make it really messy. Now, what if you don't have paint? What else could you use? Could you use crayons? You certainly could use crayons. Could you use markers? Absolutely. Again, if you're using marker, I still would do a permanent marker to go around your lines, to trace out your lines. And then I would use um, the Crayola markers to color it in. But the Crayola markers, if you use a black, it's gonna pick up, get picked up by all your other colors. All right, so I'm gonna trace all of my lines that I like. Anything that I don't like, I can erase later before I paint or before I color with the marker. All right, so there's that wing. And I find it easier sometimes to turn my paper as I'm tracing out, okay? So, there's that one. There's that one. Okay, trace over those funny little bug legs. Do you have to put the legs on? No, you don't have to. Especially since they might get hidden under the big wings. When we do the beetles, and I do like doing the beetles, I always show all six legs. Okay, so now I'm tracing over those pattern lines. I did not do a lot of little bitty pattern because that is really hard to paint inside of. If I had lots and lots and lots of little tiny polka dots and little tiny stripes, that would make my work when I'm painting much, much harder. And I don't really want to do that. I do like this line here. So I'm going to draw that one in over here. And generally, what happens on one set side is also going to happen on the other side. So you can see, I have a circle at the end, I have a circle at the end. I have a zigzag, I have a zigzag. I have this end, this end, I have it at this end. So whatever you do on one side, you should probably do on the other side. Now I am gonna go through and I'm gonna erase a little bit more. All those lines that I didn't quite trace over with my pen, with my pen, all the pencil lines, I'm gonna erase those away so that they don't show up later. Okay. Here we go. Here we go, and then inside little antenna. All right, so now I have my beetle pretty well traced out with my pen. Take care of that. I'm going to connect that just like that. 